these are the reasons why we need policy reform. I'll add a few more reasons that may or may not be on your radar already. So the Social Security Act language, as I described, makes no distinction between jails and prisons. I pretty much read for uh, verbatim what's in the Social Security Act, and the exact language is inmates of a public institution. As we know, a public institution, and it's especially a, a carceral setting, could be a jail or a prison. And there is a wide difference between jails and prisons in terms of population. So jails, as I mentioned, house mostly pretrial uh, detainees. So these are individuals, like I said, who have not gone through due process and are essentially just being housed in the jail before trial. And prisons, of course, house individuals who have been convicted and are serving their sentence. Um, there is a population that can serve out their sentence if they are convicted of a crime in a local jail. Most individuals within a jail are out within a year or so. So very different populations, uh, certainly a more transient population in jails. And that distinction really puts a lot of the burden on local jails to serve a larger number of people than um, prisons. Secondly, the language does not distinguish between uh, convicted inmates from pretrial inmates or those pending disposition. Like I said, uh, it makes no distinction between individuals who may just have housing in the jail until, as they await trial and individuals who are convicted, which jails have both types of populations. It also creates a significant care disruption through the removal of federal health benefits. As we think about just the population of individuals who are awaiting trial in a local jail, um, many of those individuals never get convicted of a crime um, and they may not get sentenced you know, to time in jail. And if they do get sentenced, it's a short period of time and they're right back out. So if an individual loses access to their health care benefits and then returns back into their community a short term time thereafter, they are experiencing the same chronic illness and mental illness as well as substance use that they were experienced prior to going into jail. But the only difference now is that they don't have the resources to get treatment, which is an extremely harmful position to put these individuals in particularly given the stat that I just gave about a significant number of people in local jails having mental illness and substance use disorder. And then lastly, it results in higher rates of recidivism, treatment disruption, and poor health outcomes. So really that cyclical kind of nature that I had on the previous side, slide reigns true here. An individual who leaves a carceral setting, whether it be a jail or a prison, without adequate resources for uh, their chronic illness, mental illness, or substance use disorder, uh, tends to end up back in the system, back in the jail, or back in prison, um, related, almost relatedly to the uh, health issue that they came into jail with initially. So the lack of treatment not only leads to poor health outcomes, but it gives them a greater risk of ending up back in the justice system. 